When COVID shut down Harvard Square over a year ago, it quickly began to look like a ghost town. At Lipiti Salon Curl Concept, cancellations flooded in. Owner Teo Sorsi tried to be optimistic. Hello, everyone. Come and have a haircut. <laughs> we're going to be okay. <laughs> but salons everywhere were hard hit, and it turned into a brutal year for Sorsi. COVID killed several family members back in Brazil. On top of that, her business all but dried up. And now? Well, it started to get better. A little better, but... It's hard to talk about. Yet Sorcy's determined, and in a business that normally demands close contact, she's tried to be nimble. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you? A client drops by, and Sorcy hands off a package of custom hair color. During COVID, she's been preparing mixes of color to use at home. Your hair is level six. Some clients have started trickling back, and she's hopeful lifting restrictions will help fill the salon again. Just downstairs from the salon, a different business and a vastly different picture. We just need to keep six feet in between parties. On this Saturday, there's a long, meandering line of customers waiting outside Black Sheep Bagels. Mara, cream cheese. But over a year ago, co-owner Manny Ramirez was nervous. For two months, sales tanked. PPP money and Cambridge City grants helped, but they also dug into their savings to keep more than a dozen staff employed. To boost business, the cafe became a grab-and-go. We decided, you know, hunker down, stay open, and uh, try to navigate through COVID, keep our staff entirely, which successfully we did. Um, and the first two months were pretty crazy, pretty chaotic, and, uh, you know, it, it balanced through. I think uh, our customers came through for us, the neighborhood really came through for us, the city uh, was a ton of help. But it also took help from landlords. According to the Harvard Square Business Association, the majority of landlords were willing to negotiate rents. Of the 291 businesses that were open pre-pandemic, the association says roughly 85 percent have survived. 76 percent are locally owned independent. So the decision makers are right here on the ground in Harvard Square and they figured it out and they were nimble and they were flexible and they were creative and they were energetic and they hung on tight. And that's made all the difference in the world. Meanwhile, Ramirez and his wife have expanded beyond the square. Right, what can we get for you? Several months into COVID, when a space came up for rent, Ramirez says they grabbed the opportunity to open Black Sheep Market, which focuses on local products. And at Le Petit Salon Curl Concept, Teo Sorsi is determined to build back her business. Just try to survive. <laughs> I, I, it's nothing I can do. They fair all the, those bills and uh, waiting to pay when we full reopen, right? After the season of darkness comes the spring of hope. Liz Nieslaus, GBH News.